Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, we've been taking a closer look at poker chips and, well, how they can maybe be used outside of the traditional game sense. So let's jump on over to the table next door and see what we have in store. Poker chips, as their name suggests, are used as a kind of currency in the game of poker to keep track of your bids and uh, basically how much money, I believe, that you've accumulated over the course of the game. Most of the time, uh, the chips have different denominations based on their value. I think they go from 1, 5, 10, maybe 25, and 50, uh, depending on, of course, I guess what level of poker you're playing. But uh, we're going to explore or at least examine a few different ways that poker chips are used in other games, perhaps outside of currency. However, in this first example, I will say uh, we are not going to go outside of that route necessarily. So to revisit On the Rocks, what we didn't get to go over, oh, it's not even a show on the camera here, uh, is that there are the recipe cards and whichever player actually is going to complete all their recipe cards first will be rewarded with a special chip token or tip token, I believe it is. Let's see if we even have the special name down here. Uh, it is going to be called the bonus coin yep all right and so on the box you can see there's a one three and five in ascending order uh, is going to be basically the extra reward that you'll receive uh, for completing all of your drinks uh, all of your drinks on that tab for the night or some thematic reasoning yep so gold silver and uh, bronze as you might imagine and these are basically used that's right for the monetary value denominations as we kind of went over in the previous example but what could be kind of fun is if uh, I don't know you want to use the chips for a dexterity element so uh, maybe some coin flipping action there we go, kind of like tossing them into the air, so thusly, uh, maybe landing them onto a target perhaps. Uh, maybe you're trying to call out which drinks that you want to get uh, in, in some spin-off game of On the Rocks or a, uh, another design of your own. I would also be curious to see what like spinning uh, chips or coins could reveal or, or do for a design. So uh, a little bit more maybe luck-based, perhaps there's skill involved at some uh, degree or point uh, eventually, but that's another thought that I had with these three specifically. Uh, not because of the money, but just because they are loose and free, and these ones are nice and light. Oh yeah, so we can get a little bit of extra distance. I'm thinking of games like Ice Cool where you can like flick things around and have them go all over the place, so maybe with the chips that are a little bit more weighted, uh, that might have some legs. Another game that I've recently had the pleasure of playing is called Too Many Bones, a dice builder RPG. And even though I'm not going to show uh, the basic draw or the main draw of the game, what I am going to show is the table presence that the stacks of chips allow for. Uh, in poker, yeah, when you're kind of keeping all these stacks, the fun aspect is definitely putting all your chips in, uh, metaphorically. Uh, betting everything that you have on your current hand, trying to maybe bluff or just even beat uh, the cards of everyone else around the table. And you don't necessarily get that same action per se in Too Many Bones, but what you do get is these piles or stacks of chips. And in this instance, the red chips are going to act as uh, your health points. And every time you take a point of damage or however much damage you uh, receive, you will remove those chips from play and uh, have this as an indicator of how healthy you are for the rest of the battle. Uh, this being the battle mat here. Uh, but there's also stacks of enemies or baddies which are off of the battle mat and will populate it at the start of an encounter dictated by a, an event card or an encounter card rather. Uh, the cool thing with this is as we've already touched on, there are different denominations of baddies which uh, increase their not risk, but their difficulty in defeating them. Uh, so you have your one pointers, which have lower values of health, uh, like this is a comparable five, uh, and then they'll do one point of damage or uh, they will roll one attack die for a possible uh, damage output and such. Uh, then you have also your fives, which are gonna be even stronger still. Uh, some of them have yet yeah, double the extra effects uh, against 
your players, which can be really nasty as things go on. And then there's also even uh, the terrible 20 point baddies, which are just the worst, uh, that are not the tyrants, which are kind of the end game bosses. Uh, just barely worse than them. So yep, you can see that they have defense, attack, uh, their health point value, and then also the uh, initiative order, which will actually be taken place here or filled in uh, by dice to keep track of them and some such. So let's see here. I'll just quickly show off as well. This is a ranged enemy, uh, the Dragon Elder, as you can see because of the bow icon. So actually they will start in whatever initiative they come out in for the color. Uh, we'll go into the arrow starting space. And yeah, basically you're going to simulate. Let me just go ahead while I'm talking to try and fill this up a little bit more. Uh, this battle mats with a bunch of different enemies and kind of scary stuff like this. Uh, the setup is not perfect, that's okay, but you can already tell things are going to get pretty crazy as you have these enemies and your players uh, populating and moving around. That's right, because you'll be moving orthogonally, just these large stacks, kind of like towers, uh, which are really cool and imposing, even as minimalistic as they are, still very nice and informative. Uh, these stacks, yeah, can have a really cool effect, and I don't have any meeples on me. My J teeple is is missing in action. But uh, you could even imagine if these were not characters themselves having pieces kind of moving across them. Uh, maybe this is uh, some kind of lava way, a la oh uh, the volcanic planet from. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Mustafar. And so maybe you're kind of trying to move around and every time you do, you uh, sink a little bit further and you can only uh, move back and forth so many times before it falls apart. It kind of makes me think of uh, Joe Slack's game, uh, Relics of Raja Vihara. Uh, so that's kind of a fun aspect as well, adding escalation or elevation rather, uh, using poker chips and kind of maybe having them uh, with different effects and some such, whichever ones are maybe removed, depending of course on your rules, if you remove it from the top or the bottom, uh, sub such. So yeah, <laughs> maybe that'll help spur another idea for yourself in whichever way using poker chips, uh, which are a very versatile, as it turns out, component. I do want to mention that these uh, health chips are kind of a an injection molded plastic, I believe. Uh, maybe not, because uh, I don't see, I guess that is where, do you see that little hole there? That would be where the injection uh, plastic comes in. But these chips here are quite a bit heftier, and I believe uh, it's either the material uh, you can kind of tell that maybe it's a little bit different of a plastic. This one's a little bit more glossy. This one's a little bit more matte. And then I think there's something in there to actually give it a little bit of heft and a little bit of weight. So that's kind of a, a neat thing too uh, in comparison to, yeah, maybe a chip like this, which feels even lighter than this one still. So uh, again, you get a lot of variability with poker chips depending on maybe where you're getting them from. Uh, other more affordable ones that you can get at like the dollar store are going to be a totally different shape and uh, might have like a different decoration and pattern. But all of that is to say that poker chips uh, are almost maybe as uh, versatile as cards perhaps uh, other than the shape. So let me know in the comments below how you would use a poker chip in your own design. I hope this video got you thinking a little bit differently about how you could use these standard round chips into your own upcoming designs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click that bell icon so that you can stay notified when the next video goes up. As always, I'm Ben, this has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint, and together, let's build something great.